Hi, I'm Jody and welcome back to Geeking with Jody. In this short video, I want to have a small talk with you about small talk, a language from 50 years ago. And the most important part, part is it's a pure object-oriented language. When I say pure object-oriented, I mean everything is an object. Even if you have a number, it's the instance of an object. For example, sorry, of a class. It's, a, for example, int class, which derives from another class, which is, for example, number. I cannot recall. I've learned this 30 years. <laughs> I am old. Anyway, it's a dynamically typed, came from Xerox in 1972, and is in the news these days because of the anniversary. On the Computer History Museum, if you want, you can go to computerhistory.org, check it there. They have a session for celebration of the 15th anniversary of small talk. It's called Making Small Talk, the origins and impact of the groundbreaking software environment. It was one of the first language, maybe the first, with a graphical environment, with a powerful debugger and everything. Before Apple Macintosh, Microsoft Windows, Python, Java, and Objective-C, there was small. In the September, September, 50 years ago, people like Adele Goldberg created this awesome language. And in this session in the computer history, Museum, you can register and attend on 1st of September, 7 p.m. Which time? We don't know. Anyway, these people will, will be there. They will, they will premiere uh, 30 minutes of their movie, which is called Message Not Understood, Small Talk. And it works with the messages I will show you. But what I want to show you, I want to walk through very quickly on the ideas of small talk and emphasis on the concept of OO 50 years ago. All these ideas were there 50 years ago. And what happened is they expanded, they changed, they developed and everything. But for many people, it's a surprise that 50 years ago, there was a pure OO language. Anyway, let's move to the next slide. The fun part is Rolf Johnson had an idea once that we can have a postcard with all the basic standard syntax of small talk. I will show you. It looks a little bit strange if you are familiar with Java, C, Python, Perl, PHP, it's a little bit strange, but we will walk through it. I'm not going to teach it. I cannot recall everything, so I cannot teach it. But I will show you some ideas. Hopefully, you will be become interested to go and do a quick check by yourself. Smalltalk syntax fits on a postcard. postcard. It's a fully object-oriented, as I told you. Even classes are instances of a meta class functions are not called you send messages to objects so messages are super important in understanding a small talk for example if you have a function which is called for example fact for factorial and you want to use it you will tell 42 fact and you will send the uh, message fact to your object 40 Two, no normal if statement. There is nothing like if blah blah do this. Instead, there is this. I have this message if true, if false, and these work on this. I will show you. It has things like bags. I just want to make you curious to go and check the syntax in a couple of hours. It won't take more than a couple of hours. This is a super minimal language and is one of the easiest one to learn. Bags are things like between lists and sets. In some language, you have lists or arrays. You have one, two, three. In some language, you have sets. For example, in Python, you have one, two, three. 
What's the difference? You cannot have duplicates in a set, but the position is not important in the set. In list, you can have duplicates, but the position is important. On the bags, as you can say, it's a bag. So, you can have duplicates, unlike sets, but the position is not important, unlike list. So it's a new concept, new concept from 50 years ago in a small talk and much more. Let's have a look at a small code. For example, this is the hello world. It says send the print new line to this object. This is a string. The fun fact is if you had uh, another single code here, you had to add another one to quote it. Or you can write it like this. Transcript, you have a transcript window. Send the show signal, so show something on it with these parameters. So we'll show this on your transcript window. As you can see, it's a little bit different concept with what we know. That's why I say it's good to spend a couple of hours and make yourself familiar with it. Any new language should be a new thinking. This is how control structures work. You say, I have this statement like thing here, as you can assignment, as you can see, assignments are like this, like Pascal. And it says result equals this. But I have two uh, parts. If true, run this block. If false, run this block. These are blocks. So again, as you can see, we are sending messages to this statement we had. Or loops. Again, you have one object. You can send a message and say 220. So count 220 from this. Do this block. Print new line, the X. This is how you work. It might look strange, and that's the reason that it's worth to have a look and get a better understanding of the new word. New. It also has reflections, which is super cool. It's a term that computer scientists apply to software programs that have the ability to inspect their own structure. So if you have a method and this method have got a message, you can use this context to look into which method called me, who sent this message. You have something which refers to practically the tree structure of your program. So you can look into different parts of your program with your program while it's being run. This is super cool and many, I was thinking about many programming languages lacks it, but it doesn't lack didn't decided to have it, especially older languages. So, small talk is cool. Spend a couple of hours and go through it. One option is searching for GNU small talk and read its documentation, try to write a couple of small programs. It also has something like an IDLE where you can run your command and see the result instantly. And as much as I can say, small talk is not that active anymore. If you learn Smalltalk, although places like JP Morgan are still using Smalltalk. The reason that this super cool, super easy language never took that much of the market, for example, comparing with Java, has different reasons maybe. One can be its licensing fee. It was kind of expensive to use it. Even if I'm not mistaken, people went to the direction that asking companies that if you are using small talk and you are earning money, we need some percentage of that money, which is not cool if you want your language to be used in many places. Later, Java took lots of uh, market for itself, comparing with small talk, and small talk practically phased out, although it's still being used in many places. One other reason was Smalltalk uses an interpreter to run. So it runs line by line. 
which is obviously slower than compilers, which create a uh, binary executable to run. So it was slow, people were greedy, so it didn't took up. But it has cool ideas. You can learn lots of great things about programming, programming histories, getting new ideas by maybe a couple of hours searching for small talk, even reading its Wikipedia entry and see how people invented kind of, not the first one, but still maybe the best example of object-oriented in 50 years ago, 1970.